Hey, what's going on? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and we're going to be talking about the quarterback tournament. This is the weekend round. It's the finals. Congratulations on making it this far. Now it's time to carry this baby across the end zone. You know the drill by now. If you're not a subscriber, please become one. It would really mean a lot to me. And secondly, just please jam that thumbs up button and like the video if you found my walkthrough helpful today. And most importantly for me, if you appreciate the time and the efforts that I put into the videos, if they helped you, you know, have a great tournament this weekend, you can show me a little love by checking out the comments section below. There's a link to my PayPal, or you could become a member to my channel. You know, that would be awesome too. But regardless, you know, I appreciate everybody watching and let's hop into what we have going on today. So minus 15 round, it's decent. You know, it's enough to get me in the mix. Definitely not enough to take home a gold, so I got to go on fire on the back nine. But, you know, disappointing on hole number six here and disappointing on hole number two. But the shots that I did not make, they are left at pin for the most part. So, which is really exciting because I think it's going to be easy for me to walk you through what you need to do to dial them in so you can get them to drop. Uh, enough talking. Let's go. Hole number one. Easy peasy. Quarterback, 20% at max. All we're doing here, one bar top, one bar right side spin. We're aiming between the bunkers. You know what we're doing. We've been doing it all tournament in this thing here. I'm going to push my rings instead of pull. It's up to you on what you want to do. It's just better on that angle to do that. But perfect ball, and we get this thing coming up. 302. Now, the thing about shot number two here is we need to offset, okay? We're going to play at 15% at mid, which is ultimately one for one with our rings. Now, I'm going to be aiming on the right-hand side of the cup here. Right there. All right. The reason that I do that is because on my other account, uh, I had missed to the left barely. So, you know, I knew that I needed to offset this particular shot in order to get this ball to drop in the hole. With a perfect ball, of course, that's going to be important. But, you know, that's the benefit of having two accounts in Rookie, and I have two accounts in Pro. Basically, what I do is I go to hole one, I take my shot, I pray to the Golf Clash gods that I hit perfect, so that if I make it, then I know I'm good. But if I miss, then I can hop right over to my other account and try to dial it in for you and for me. Okay, this one stinks that they're going to give us a headwind in the finals. I wish we would have got it out of the way in an earlier round. But regardless, we have to work with what we've got. Kingmaker is what I'm going to suggest. Um, and max right spin. The reason that I'm doing a Kingmaker here over a Katana is because my Katana came up short, so I was trying to add a little bit more powerful ball. Now you're going to see here, I'm going to wiggle around until I find the ball guideline through the pin, just like that, with the yellow ring at the rough. Okay, so back to it. There we go. This is a 30% pull at max. I'll go back because I, I skipped through that too fast. I know some people like to watch the ring pull. Okay, so 30% at, at, I'm sorry, 30% at minimum. Jeez, wake up, David. 30% at minimum, not max. So we need to add probably half a bar of top spin to this shot. Typically, though, the problem with adding the top spin is... Uh, sometimes it's hard to get the setup correctly. It's hard to find the ball guideline through the pin. So, you know, don't time out looking for it. Just take the shot. If you can find a good developed ball guideline through the pin with max right and a half a bar of top spin, you're going to be in really good shape on hole number two. This is going to bring us to hole number three. Nothing special here. I was prepared to go to the left-hand side in case we got headwind, but we're going to take this crosswind. We're going to go max top. We're going to go three bars of left side spin, which is max as well. 10% elevation here, and we're just going to go bombs away. You see here, I'm using quite a bit of overpower, and we're just going to try to power this thing from fairway to fairway, and then we're going to hope we can pick up as much distance as possible. Now, for you that are playing with lower level extra miles, I would suggest this is a great hole you use a berserker on, and it's always important to load up on berserkers in the golden shot. So next week, we have a golden shot coming up. Make sure you get in there and you get as many berserkers as possible because I do like to use them in final rounds of tournaments or I like to suggest them for some people with lower clubs so that way you can keep up with some of the people with higher clubs. 
And that may not be a concern if you're in Tier 1 or Tier 2, but if you're playing Tier 3, you're going to need that to keep up these days. All right, going from a Thorn Shot. Thorn Shot, I'm playing this bad boy 10% at max. You're going to see here that I am aiming on the right-hand side of the cup. So you see where I zoom in there so that everybody watching can see where I'm aiming. There it is. The reason I do that, you can guess it, I barely missed this albatross on my other account to the left-hand side. So, perfect ball here, and I know based off my last miss that if I hit perfect, this ball is going in the cup. Dead center, learning from my, my previous mistake, picking up an albatross, that way you all can copy that and take that bad boy home. Okay, finally, hole number four, finally pick this one up, man, it should not be that hard. But we're going to go with a one bar of side spin to the left. All right. The top spin here. Oops. Top spin is about three bars. So three bars at top. Did I change that to three and a half? Oh, that's right. I did. Okay. I'm sorry. So I was looking at my notes from my other account, the wrong account. A little bit more than three bars at top. One bar of side spin to the right. So on my other account, I came up short and I came up to the left. So you're going to see here. Notice my ball guideline is going through the pin, because remember I came up short on my other count, through the pin, and I'm offsetting to the right-hand side of the cup. So my ball guideline is about, it's split, like the cup is breaking it in half. Half my ball guideline is through the right-hand side of the cup, the other half is fully on the green. Notice here I have my orange ring um, below the rough line. This is my setup spot. So I'm playing this rough bump very low. And the reason that I'm doing that is not something that I normally do, but I do get some comments that people in rookies struggle with rough bumps. So I wanted to leave you lots of room for a great shot. This shot right here is going to be shot proof. Even if you hit a great, you're going to be okay. You're not going to get the hole in one if you hit a great, but you can see here, dead center, hole in one. You know, we're really having a good round. That's going to take us on to hole number five. Hole number five, make sure you bring your guardian, okay? This is a 0% elevated shot on the drive. This is nothing special. Full top. You know, don't use a lot of overpower, though. Don't use a lot of overpower because what you don't want to do right here is you don't want to clip the rough and roll out. That would be deadly. You want to make sure you go from fairway to fairway and you roll down here. Okay, shot number two is played for me. 10% at mid and I stress for me because the distance on my drive is going to depend on where you were going to be at you might be at max my other account I was at max distance because I did not pick up as many yards on my drive as I did on this account but for here this is a 10% shot at mid and look at my ball guideline the top of it okay notice how it's in the dark green row it is literally like on the seam almost to where the dark green switches to light green okay you see that i want you if you take this shot to move this over a fraction to the right hand side i do not want you to change the spin adjustments the spin is max backspin with half a bar of right side spin okay now check this out It's like, dude, you have got to be kidding me. Come on, man. That's a tough drop. And to get that close, ooh, so close. All right, that's why I want you to move it over a fraction. I don't want you to add more right side spin because you know in previous rounds when we added more right side spin, that ball was really kicking to the right-hand side with the same setup, all right? Hole number six, I'm super disappointed that I did not pick this up on either one of my accounts. I am not pulling elevation. I'm doing a landing position shot. Full top, one and a half right. I'm going to put my ball guideline as I stretch out to max, okay? This is not a regular ball guideline. I am stretching out my club to overpower, and then I am putting it right next to the tree, okay? Do you see that? Right next to the tree. The reason that I'm not pulling rings is because on my other account, I pulled rings. I hit a perfect ball and I clipped the base of the tree and my ball kicked to the left-hand side. I didn't make it down there. Now here, you'll see I'm using overpower with a little bit of right curl, not a lot of right curl. I needed more right curl. So you're gonna see here that I get down here into the sand, all right? Now, this is fine. Um, this happens sometimes on this hole, 
but a little bit more right curl and I think we could have avoided the sand. But if you get in the sand like me, the, the best way to play out of the sand, and this is, um, the best way to play out of the sand is to shorten the distance from your target to the sand. You don't wanna play your target close to the hole. So you wanna go max top spin. That way you can back your target up as far as possible and still get this ball guide line to the hole. Now you see that I'm offsetting to the right. That's just because the wind is kicking a little bit to the left. And all I have to do is hit perfect and this ball will go in. But I hit a great ball to the left and you'll see that it still almost sneaks in the cup. So we just roll around the cup and we pick up a birdie. That one's a little frustrating, but hey, you know, you take the good with the bad, right? So this is gonna be hole number seven. Okay, the shot that you were seeing me play, there's a reason why there's no graphic. The shot you're seeing me play is being played 15% at mid, which is one for one. So I'm gonna pull this four and a half rings. I want you to play this 20% at mid because you were gonna see me miss to the right hand side barely. I do know that this spin is pretty good. What I would like you to do is keep the side spin one bar of right side spin you see here i'm playing with about 0.8 back i want you to play with like half a bar of back spin or, or, or 0.6 bars of back spin if you can be really technical with it all right now check out the landing spot here all right notice that the ball guideline is aiming about what's that one and a half green square short of the pin but favoring the left hand side of the cup and a little bit of my blue ring is dipping into the sand. I think that's gonna be the best way for you to find that spot. There's that four and a half rings, perfect ball. This one's really close too. So the reason that I want you to pull 20% is because that's gonna make you pull more rings to the left, which means you shouldn't miss to the right like I did. So you should be, you should be closer to the hole in one. And if we take a little bit of the backspin off, that ball is gonna come into the pin a little bit faster, giving the ball less time to roll to the right-hand side, if that makes sense. Okay, hole number eight. Um, you know, I was willing, I was getting ready to play with my katana because I didn't know what the wind was gonna be. So then I switched to my berserker because anytime we get crosswind or tailwind, we're gonna play this shot right here. The only thing that we don't like about the shot um, on this wind angle is sometimes for some reason I clip this tree branch, uh, which I do do on this shot. So I want you to go to two and a half bars of top spin instead of what I did. And then of course, max side spin to the right. But regardless, we hit the fairway and the ball takes too big of a bounce. And I think I clip the bottom of the tree branch, but I luckily roll out onto the fairway. Leave me with shot number two here, uh, which I was surprised that I had this club in my bag. I must have just had the, you know, I don't know how this happened. But it threw me off, but I still make the shot. So notice here I'm going with the side spin to the right just because of the, how this green kicks. And I got the ball guideline center. Here I pull this 0% at minimum distance. I mean, you can see it was like a half a ring or 0.7, something like that. We clip that little hill and we roll down dead center for the eagle. No harm, no foul. I would much rather have the M bringer than that club though. Um, which I need to change my bag. Hole number nine, 10% at max. There's nothing special here, okay? Full top, two bars of right, 10% pull, overpower, slam the ball up the fairway. Now, the thing about shot number two is there is no graphic because shot number two, you are gonna have to check your own distance of your club. You're gonna see that I'm gonna be at minimum distance of my sniper. Look at my second shot. It's starting me off with the Goliath. Now I'm gonna push this up to go with my sniper, but that means I'm at minimum distance. If you don't get as many yards on the drive as I did, you might be at medium distance, or heck, you might even be at max. So you need to check your own distance. If you're taking notes, I want you to play this shot at minus 5%, okay? And you're gonna see why. I am playing this shot at minus 15%, but I want you to play at minus five. One bar left, three bars at the top, center of the hole. Now you're gonna see here that I pull this shot about what's at 1.6 rings and the wind is 2.4. So this is not a big ring pull. Perfect ball 
and we leave this one, we're going to burn the right-hand side of the cup. So if I would have played this at minus 5%, that would be adding elevation to the shot. That means I would be pulling more rings to the right. So minus 5%, this ball would have been in the hole for an albatross. I hope this helps. I hope you become a subscriber. Please hit the thumbs up button. And best of luck, I'll start the back nine as soon as this uploads.